Okay. If you have any questions or concerns about this week's episode, please call or text producer Dan at 778-288-9255. Start the party, Dan. It's time to turn it up. We're getting crazy, going wild, fucking nasty stuff. Dude scrolling down, sight of fucked up. Fire, boom, roast, bad post, sticking up the replies. We don't want to go to school. We don't want to get a job. We just want to get on line and get our ass to We don't follow the rules. We do whatever we want. It's Block Party, the podcast, like we're tweeting the duck. Block Party. Block Party. Block Party. My message is fucked. Block Party. Block Party. Block Party. I'm like tweeting the duck. Hello, friends, idiots, and friends who are also idiots. Welcome to your favorite podcast about social media and rejection. It is Blocked Party. This is episode number 268. I'm John. I'm Stefan. And with us is a fantastic guest, first time guest on the program, very funny comedian, the world's foremost leisure athlete, and the writer, producer, director, and star of the brand new feature length ski comedy film, Weak Layers. Katie Burrell is here. Hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi guys! Thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I'm so honored. Uh, I mean, that's the wrong. The that's, th- yeah. I mean, thank you, but that's. <laughs> you're not- I forever, I forever feel like a fangirl. That's my like resting state is just fangirl. And so when I was like listening to the podcast you guys have done, watching through, like seeing who's been on it before, I'm just like obsessed with every single person that's been on the show. <laughs> forever, I will be like a newcomer to the Vancouver stand up scene in my head. Like that is a core memory for me. Right. And so like seeing Aaron and Dino and all these people that I'm like, have just looked up to forever. I like that. that, I like that. Those are the people that you're choosing. Not the like famous uh, people. (laughs) No, no, no. Exactly. Exactly. Like Tony Hawk. I don't care. Aaron (laughs) Reed. Love him. Aaron Reed. (laughs) Die for ride or die for like (laughs) early, early days moving to the city and being like so nervous to try stand up for the first time. And like in Vancouver, or actually I shouldn't say it like that because I came back to Vancouver after I like, bombed at the comedy mix for the first time but um <laughs> and like left the city like excommunicated myself i was like i'm doing this for the i don't think i knew sake. that story so you tried it well, once because, and you and you did really bad no so i had like a false sense of confidence because i did stand up at mcgill okay and i did like very specific mcgill jokes for mcgill students in McGill right bars. okay and then i came to vancouver thinking i was hot shit did mcgill bit no on stage <laughs> at the comedy mix and just like ate shit and was you like, guys know oh, mcgill I, university I, yeah, exactly. That's good. That's yeah. a good bit to you do on purpose, this? though. I think I like straight up tried to do like building references and like <laughs> I, I course think, jokes. I think that can work terrible. if you're if you're doing that bit on purpose. That that can sort of work. I think. Like I did. Um, I did stand up at John's going away show last year for the first time in like twelve years, and my bit was I was doing a bunch of jokes from the last time I did stand up in like twenty eleven. Uh, and uh, so I was like, well, the jokes are going to be, it was a different time. So, you know, some things that were okay to say back then are maybe not okay to say now, but I'm, I'm going to do them anyway. I'm going to do my old routine. And then it was all just jokes about, <laughs> uh, the trapped Chilean miners. Uh, so I think if you like, le- if you lean not into, <laughs> if you lean into doing McGill references in a different city and act like they should know, like, I think, I think that could work. Yeah. I mean, is it something I'm ever going to try? <laughs> never say never at this probably point not. you probably don't have to yeah <laughs> but um so you yeah, did it once anyway. and bombed and then you moved Asia, to Revelstoke moved to Revelstoke then came. started doing the started doing the radio show and then started the comedy festival in Revelstoke and then the first time I did stand up again was like just a 20 minute set for a Revelstoke crowd again putting myself inside jokes for sure. Revelstoke crowd I literally am like save on foods and everyone like shit's <laughs> bad you know what I mean <laughs> And, uh, but then I brought like Ivan Decker and Kyle Bottom and, um, a bunch of other names out that I had heard were the guys in the Vancouver scene. This is like 2000 and I don't know, 13. And, um, Ivan and Kyle were like, you got to move to Vancouver and try it. And so I moved to Vancouver, like, because they told me to, Oh wow! to try stand up. <laughs> and then Kyle was like, I'll put you out of the mix. Don't blow it <laughs> used to, remember remember how mean he used to be when he was like booking uh, used to be oh <laughs> used to be what he's like a dad and a I radio know. show guy now he's got he's got to be way nicer <laughs> anyway he, when he was I always to... nice to me i think i got i think i got lucky for some reason he was just he was i never had the like kyle bottom like uh 
you should quit stand up moment. Like I no, never really no. had. Oh that. my god, he's always so sweet when no. we have him on the show too. Yeah. So. No, he's so, he is uh, he was intimidating as hell. I guess means he's got a word. deep voice. I guess right, that's part of it. I think. And he also didn't want to book shitty comedians on at the mix, which I respect. Sure. And anyway, and then I did a good job, and I was shaking for like forty eight hours. <laughs> um, and then yeah, so forever in my mind, like the only people that matter in comedy are like Dino, Ivan, and Kyle Bottom. And then and Aaron and then I and then Aaron because I started doing improv and I was like, what the fuck is the Sunday service? This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. Aaron is a genius. I, I couldn't so be funny. bothered to like go watch SNL because of the Sunday. Service. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean, it's incredible. It's so good. Yeah, Aaron is like all of them on the show, I think, except for Caitlin. Uh, but that's her, that's because she <laughs> she's like, I don't think I've blocked anybody. And I was like, OK, well, you can still come on the show. <laughs> and then she's never been on the show so. <laughs> but the everybody are, else in the sunday service we have caitlin I, I, howden if you're listening we want you on the show I, it's time we're 268 ep- i asked her let's do it i think like right when we started yeah so now i feel like we now, were like five years later yeah we're five years in now caitlin howden God, it's are time. we really five years in this is gonna be our six year anniversary we're this year, over right? five years in yeah we started in november of 2018 oh my god that's so cool that's insane yeah. thank you guys Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, you've been nicer than any guest has ever been to us in the first like five. You're like, oh, good for you. I'm so honored. Like, this is really not what we're used to. We're sort of really? used to people coming on here and being like, ah, you two little piss worms. Yeah. You know, fuck you or whatever. We sort of but, invite that upon ourselves. Yeah, think, exactly. So. I'm not saying we don't like that also. No, we're fine with both. We're fine you know? with that. I believe, but. I believe the colloquial term is asking for it. Absolutely. Yeah. We bring it on ourselves for sure. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we when you dress like this, you're just you're asking for it. So. I, I feel like I've I feel like I've been dressing better recently. I'm, yeah, I've this looks like, like a new sweater you have on right now. Yeah. What is this hat though? Is that a Canucks hat? No, no, this is like an old. This is like the old Puma logo. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, is it like a vintage Puma? Hat? No, you can never like a, see him without this hat on. He fucks with this hat on mo- for sure. I haven't since he got this hat. I have never seen him without it's it. It's my on. go-to hat. Yeah, zero yeah. percent denying the fuck allegation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like face and he's not bald change. it's not like he's like a bald guy who's like no. i gotta i gotta strap up before i get in here he, yeah he's... Stefan, is this like your safety hat oh for sure yeah <laughs> absolutely a hundred percent that's cool yeah awesome. it's comfortable it's a comfortable hat too because it's kind of like the t- you can sort of see the texture of it it's like sort of like it is textured it's not like like typical hat texture so it's like terry yeah. cloth almost right which okay, we're nice. gonna let you have it. Yeah, Seven. that's great. <laughs> okay, like, yeah, yeah. no one is arguing with you about the hat being great. Like, we're happy for you. Just uh, thirty <laughs> seconds into describing the texture of his hat. Yeah. <laughs> also, you guys have just given me a runway to be an asshole. You're like, by oh, the way, please, <laughs> no, yeah, go like, for we it. don't care. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Bust no, our balls, and I mean that's kind of your thing now. I mean, you've you've really you know you and I were were good friends back in the van back in your Vancouver comedy days. Mm-hmm. And now you've really, uh, you know, you've kind of taken off. I mean, obviously, I said at the top, you've got a movie coming out. But you're, you're, this is sort of your thing is like you kind of just bust the balls of like skiers and, and snowboarders and stuff who think they're cool or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like I tried to start. I mean, it was kind of a reaction to COVID. Like I was doing stand up and working on documentaries, um, sort of like comedy documentaries was like this style of documentary that my team and I were producing. And um and then when COVID hit, we were kind of like, fuck, <laughs> we're in a lot of debt because we were working on these docks that all of our financing dried up on, uh, dried up for. And then um, we were like looking at each other. We had to move into, Colleen and I moved into the same house so we could be in this, the bubble and keep working on stuff. And then she was like, well, look, I got camera gear and we can go out in the wood, woods and do fucking one-liners. And um, so we just started kind of like, yeah, ripping on the things that were available to us, um, mountain biking, skiing, trail running, hiking. And it turned out there were all like, yeah, the outdoor industry is way bigger than you realize. Yeah. And so when we started putting content out, um, like taking the piss out of it, it was just kind of shocking at how I hate the word viral, but viral it was going. Um, yeah. You know. I think because it is like so it's very specific, I guess. Right. Which people will. That's like if you're just doing stuff that like, you know, and then it shows. Right. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I think, like niche. Yeah. But it's but it's like a huge niche. Like it's yeah. kind of like I'm I'm not I'm, I'm not trying to do what you're doing, but a similar thing in curling where like, you know, I've been curling my whole life and I'm trying to 
cover curling in a way that it's never been covered before, which is good, but there's also zero dollars in curling. So it's like yeah. people like what I'm doing and, and it's going well, but it's also like there's no there's no giant you know, company you? that's just raining cash on me to do curling stuff. Whereas like, I feel like outdoor stuff is cool because it does feel niche. And there are definitely people who know absolutely nothing about it, but it's a huge niche. And there's lots of people who both do it and have money to like give you stuff to do or give you money to do stuff about it. Yeah. And I think there's a very specific thing that happened where a lot of people were um, participating in these sports and they were making them feel like shit because they're so hard. And it was like, there's this culture inherent to outdoor sports. It was like, you have to be so sick at everything. And that's what the, like all the marketing is. It's all hero marketing. And I came in and was like, fuck this, like leisure athlete back of the pack. Somebody has got to sweep, you know, I'm not, I got nothing to prove yeah. energy. And the majority of people are not alpinists and psychopaths that want to stand on top of a mountain every day. The majority of people are like accountants, lawyers, teachers, that go and do these sports in their free time on the weekends, you know, with a limited budget. And so having someone come in and kind of give them like counterculture content that connected more so with their really true lived experience, it was like kind of this, it was like a perfect timing moment on it as well. That was like a reaction to this aggressive hero marketing trend that went on for so long and continues to go on um, in the industry. Yeah. Anyway, but, but to the curling thing. It's almost like you guys need to hire curling. The curling board of directors needs to get together and hire like someone super hot to be like the bad boy of curling. And he needs to go like smash rocks and punch holes in glass and cause a scene and like cur cur like give curling like a hard. Yeah, core, like the, ha the happy Gilmore edge. of curling. Yeah, we, we have that guy already. Well, I haven't heard of them. Yeah, I know. Well, that, that's what I mean. No one has. Because no one knows how to market anything. It's like... Wait, does he actually break shit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Breaks brooms. Oh, does constantly. It, do do yeah. they do the, like, how baseball players will yeah, snap a Yeah, they'll break it over their knee. Yeah. That's cool. I yeah, feel like yeah. snapping a broom would be pretty... Like, what is it? He's a very of? hot guy. You would not You would know him if you saw him, because he he's a two-time Olympic gold medalist. His okay. name's John okay. Morris. He's from Calgary, actually. John Morris? Yeah, when in the okay. 2010 Olympics, he was named one of Canada's most eligible bachelors. Oh yeah, I do. Re I remember this guy. Yeah, okay. yeah, I feel like I remember seeing him on TV during the Olympics. Yeah, and he's sort of like the bad boy. He's like he's hot. Okay. He breaks brooms. He's kind of like a you know. But he's now a bigger, he's, older, he's a bigger he's guy down. too. I feel like too. Oh yeah, so. he's ripped. He's yeah. ripped. He's a, yeah. John and I. He's a good friend. We've we've. He's a very good looking guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And All right. so I have but ideas. he's getting, he's ideas. getting old though. That, that's the problem. We so we need a new young, but that could sort of work. Like, you could do like a silver Fox kind of thing. He's right? in his forties. <laughs> he's got a couple kids. He's settling down a bit. So we do, yeah. we do need the new young bad boy. 28 to 34 bad boy. Yeah. Right. We need the, we need leather the, jacket. We need yeah. the hero marketing and curling. We just, that's the problem. We, we don't, we're all, it, all the marketing is we we're all we all just kind of sort of know what we're doing over here we yeah need the, right we we got to go the opposite way of skiing we need a hero we don't have a hero you know are there curling i mean i guess all of curling is sort of trick shots in a way but is there like curling <laughs> trick shot stuff there are some people who have tried to do like curling trick shot stuff it yeah, must I, be tough though because it specifically has to be on <laughs> It's not. It's very limited. It's not like basketball or whatever. Or like yeah, exactly. Or it's like not like you can be like, uh, hey, I took this curling rock up to the top row of this stadium. Yeah, you can't be I, dude perfect, but yeah, for curling. You can't dude perfect. Throwing curling, it off the side of a fucking dam or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would like to see that. To Ooh, be honest, that would be sick. Actually, that reminds me of uh, that Elledge. I actually don't know how to pronounce his name, but the figure skater who started skating outside. It's like Ella J. Bajalde or something. I fuck out his name. <laughs> But Close that's enough. for sure not how you say it. <laughs> um, I don't know how to uh, say it, but I know the way I am saying it is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the way I read it on his social media. Um, <laughs> do you ever, does that ever happen to you when you're reading like a book and someone is, the, the, the way the name is spelled is slightly different in the book. And then for the whole book, you just kind of say it three times in your head every time you read oh, yeah. this person's yeah. name. Yeah. The biggest example of that, I think I've talked about on the show before, but I always love when you're, as a high school teacher, when you're teaching Shakespeare, because you have the kids read it out loud in class 
And they're so stuck in like Shakespeare, Middle English brain that they'll say regular English words with like this. They say them so wrong because they just think it because they're just so used to like, oh, everything is weird. And then they'll just say a, a regular word will come up and they'll say it so like privacy and they'll be like privacy, the, the privacy <laughs> of the, you know, or whatever. And you're like, no, it's just privacy. Like, it's still the same word we have now. It's I love that. It's That's always so a great fun. moment. Yeah. God. It's nice. I, I sort of miss I sort of miss uh, the like reading aloud in class thing. That was always fun. Um, oh, man. Because there would <laughs> always be someone who <laughs> would like say vagina. Oh, yeah. Like cause you could you would read ahead and you'd know which page you were going to read and you'd be like, oh, I'm, I want page I'm gonna, 18. Yeah, I I'm going to nail this one. <laughs> No, I would like my heart would pound if I had like a racy section of the hatchet to read or whatever it was. Like it was like Lord of the Flies hatchet, like going around and then like, oh, the humiliation when someone would like slightly fuck up a word oh. and like no one in class would contain Everyone it. Everyone would go nuts. Yeah. I'm trying well, to remember. I, remember, okay, wait, I, so uh, I had the, I don't know if I've told this story before, but I was in IB, uh, which is like a, it's sort bell. of like a. Well, yeah, well, I do. I, I'm also you do have I, that. Yeah. I do also have IBS. Uh, but in high school, I had international <laughs> well, baccalaureate, sure. which is uh, <laughs> it's like you do first year university in high school. It's sort of like AP. It's like similar to AP. And so you have to do separate exams for your IB exams. And in English, you had to do an oral exam, which is just you and your teacher sitting in a room for 30 minutes. You get a passage of literature and then you get like five minutes to study it. Then you have to talk about it for 15 minutes unprompted and oh then God. answer questions about it for 15 minutes. And the passage that I got, we had read Handmaid's Tale. And the passage I got was a passage where uh, Margaret Atwood is writing about, I think it's Offred's garden. And it's basically just a metaphor for a pussy. And so my entire, I would love to find the tape because it's literally <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> Of me and my like 50 year old English teacher sitting in the greenhouse at my old high school of me being like, uh, yeah. And uh, clearly like when she's talking about the hedges being trimmed, that is pubic hair or whatever. Like it was just, it was like 30 minutes yeah. of that. How'd you do on the exam? I, I did great. I got wow. an A plus. Wow. Yeah. Nicely done. I, I think it's because I was just like, whatever. I don't like, I this probably is what I'm supposed other students to do. Like, were just like, oh boy, I don't who think didn't I can wanna. talk about this. And That's I was like, crazy. Yeah. I was like, I'll there go was in. No, there's no way at 16 or 17 or however old you are in grade 12 for, that I would have been able to talk about a penis for 30 minutes. Like I had no, had had no zero interaction with them at that time. <laughs> I would have had no concept of how they function, operate, dangle, any metaphor whatsoever <laughs> would have been completely out of reach for me. Maybe I got lucky because I you, lost my virginity young. So maybe that, yeah, that for helped sure, me. For sure. It would have been funny. <laughs> it for if, sure did. It for sure did. It would have been good if you, if you read that passage and were just like, it's about a, it's about a garden. Just like, the, <laughs> yeah, just this is like her hedge. Glossed. I guess she's trimming the, she's out there trimming the hedge, you know, she's, yeah. Try, she's there's a bean involved i think she's flicking it for some reason you know i don't know what's yeah, going flicking on flicking the beans was actually a way to get them to grow bigger yeah. back in the uh, <laughs> back in the handmaid's uh, tales time i, I think, believe i think i've brought this up before but um the best reading aloud moment um when when i was a kid was there's a kid in my class who was kind of like he was like i, I don't want to say he was like cocky but he was like he was a pretty obnoxious kid and he pronounced epitome epitome and everyone just like, everyone just lost it on him. It was so a good. Loser. People were just like losing their mind, and like it was it was great. It was, we never <laughs> yeah. let him forget it. He was the epitome guy from then on. It was uh, it was really good. Katie, yeah, have epitome you... is one you always get in segue. People always go. Yes, Segu. that's a tough one. Yeah, um, Segue is a classic. Katie, have you seen to t talk about skiing? I haven't gone skiing in a long time. Um, but obviously, uh, so I'm in Vancouver, and there's a lot of mountains here. Have you seen how fucked up this the lack of snow is? Like all oh, of yeah. the, all of the mountains are just closed and it seems like they're just yeah. going to be closed for the entire season. Yeah. It's an, well, it's an El Nino season, um, which is like notoriously warm, yeah. but then it's also like coupled with climate change and really, you're going to make me talk about climate no, change. I just, you know, it's just like, it's so crazy because like, you know, yes. I see the mountains here in Vancouver, you're just walking around, <laughs> you see them and like, it's so strange not 
See, Speaking of so seeing, it's kind of crazy how the world is absolutely <laughs> fucked right yeah. now. Could you talk like, about that? Stefan's like, Stefan's like, let's just pause. It's like super fun, lighthearted riff <laughs> on like saying fucked up words in middle school. And let's have Katie just, let's just have Katie like talk about climate change. Well, for my New resolution to was, was to, to bring uh, more eyes to some serious issues in, in the world <laughs> in 2024. So I think we have a platform and I think we should use it for, we shouldn't just be talking about um, like poop and pee and stuff, you know? I think I think it's time, John. It's time for us to grow up here at Block Party. <laughs> yeah, is that can you imagine yeah. if, I, if I actually did that? That would be so fucked. <laughs> like I'm trying to riff every show, yeah. and you're just asking all of our guests. It's like very, very serious, serious questions, questions about. Uh, well, recently I was reading a news article recently. Well, I don't want to go that far. And I fully, just to be clear, I'm I not fully reading tried. the news. Yeah, and okay. think I mean I, feel, I fully I, tried too. I like dipped in. I was yeah. like, well, you know, me- meteorologists are, uh, you know, farmers, <laughs> farmer in almanac are. Uh, it is an El Nino meteor. season. Yeah, El Nino, uh, <laughs> the currents in the ocean. So it, it, that uh... it is just like I mean I I again like I haven't gone. I I used to go skiing and and enjoyed it, but I I think I was again more of a casual. You know, I wasn't particularly good at it necessarily. I can um, I can. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Th- <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think I could probably get into it again. The only thing I worry about is I, I tore my ACL like four years ago, but I also, I don't know. I mean, how uh, playing soccer. Um, okay. so I don't know. I mean, I, I think I could, I could do, I could ski and just go on like, uh, like bunny Hills and stuff and be fine. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Do you think it's safe with a, my, I never got surgery on it. So, did you do like proper rehab for it? Yeah, I did. I did physio. Then you're probably fine. And I'm playing Actually, soccer again now. So. Oh, you're fine. Okay. Then. All right. Yeah. Okay. If you have like the muscles built up around it, oftentimes yeah. surgery oh, is I, actually more in, There's no muscles invasive. there, to be clear. My legs are very, okay. yeah, there's nothing going on down there. But Well, the great <laughs> thing about skiing is that the ski boot is like, you know, a third of your leg. Right. right? Like it's to the knee, basically. Yeah. So, and it's, it locks you in. It acts kind of like a muscle. That's true, actually. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. So you, won't, you really only need like some mobility in your knees and okay. like very light quad strength if you're going to be on the bunny hills and okay. you're holding the pizza for the majority of, the of time, course it sounds like to me absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. i did like that you were like i don't want to talk about climate change and then stefan was like how about your medical opinion on uh <laughs> what's going yeah, on with i feel my like you really could... respect me <laughs> i respect all of our i went out with equally. this guy last night and he was asking me about climate change and my yeah. medical opinion on stuff it was so <laughs> refreshing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think he like I, thinks i'm smart <laughs> i think i think you're i think you're very smart i think all of our guests are very smart aside from i don't well some of our guests are yeah i mean we've had like why do you keep talking about the other guests like am i not enough like fuck no i'm saying i'm saying you're you're smart and a lot of our guests are stupid so i'm shit talking all the other guests now you know i'm kind of going the other mm-hmm. way here i i fucking hate all of our guests <laughs> you're the only Except guest Dino, we've ever had that that i and that Kyle, i enjoy and Kyle and yeah Ivan. Yeah, <laughs> they're all great, of course. Obviously. Only guests that have been mentioned by name on this episode yeah. or are currently on this That's episode. That's correct, yeah. Do we yeah. like it's a and short think list. are smart? It's a short list. John, did you you snowboarded, right? No. No? no. I went skiing once ever. Oh, um, I thought you were a snowboard guy for some reason. No, no. You were a uh, longboard guy. Uh, right? Yeah, skateboard and longboard. Yeah, yeah but okay. never, never snowboard because, um, well, <laughs> sadly enough, I didn't really snowboard or ski because of curling. So it was because it's just too risky to get hurt during curling season. Um, And it just like, you know, you hear a lot of stories of, yeah, I went skiing for the first time and I broke my wrist or I tore up my leg or whatever. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I only went skiing once, but I went for three days because I was my ex was a huge uh, skier. This is going back like this probably would have been this was my university days like, oh, eight, probably. Uh, and she was from, uh, from Alberta, from Lethbridge. So I was going to go and see her at Christmas because in university she was going home for like three weeks or whatever. So I was like, oh, why don't I come like after Christmas and, you know, hang out with you or whatever, since we're going to be apart for three weeks. And she was like, you can, but if you do that, you have to go skiing because we ski every single day. And I was like, okay, I guess, sure, <laughs> I guess so. And I went skiing three times and, um, look, I don't want to beginning of the end. Yeah, it was, it was in some ways, you know, people were sort of saying, wow, this guy looks like the next Bodie Miller. 
Uh, he looks like the the that's the only skier. I See, got. if I was reading his name aloud in class, I would have said Bode the first time I saw it. <laughs> Bode Miller, yeah. But I, I'm the I'm the the new Herman Meyer. I like that I'm not even picking like cool. I'm just picking downhill race skiers. I don't know any like trick ski I'm just, guys. Like, unsure what you're going for here. Like you actually, we're good. <laughs> like or yeah, I was were... good. Yeah, I was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like you, they were surprised. They were like surprised they were, that I, I I wasn't actually that good, but I think they were okay. surprised picked because pretty quick. I picked it up pretty quick because it's kind of like skating. <laughs> this is like classic male confidence. I'm sorry. You're like, oh, yeah. I skied for three days. I skied for three days. And <laughs> extended family was like, damn. This is yeah, they were my in-laws. I mean, they didn't even like me. You know, there's like my girlfriend's dad was like, I didn't like you until I saw you ski. And now I think you are incredible. No, I was really just trying to do a joke, uh, and it yeah. didn't work. Obviously, did you have uh, trouble? Because um, for for me, what always uh, stressed me out when I was skiing was the chairlifts. I would always get stressed out by that. I don't. I didn't mind that. I was more stressed out because I think so. Obviously, my my ex was incredibly good at skiing. She'd skied like her whole life. Right. You know, any run, not a problem. We went to Castle Mountain. She's doing whatever black diamonds. She does backcountry, no problem. So it sucked for her, I'm sure, because I had to be like, hey, you know, so she took me down the bunny hill like one time and she was like, oh, you're actually like decent at this because I think because of hockey, like it's, you know, totally. I yeah. knew how to stop. I knew how to like, you know, so she was for like, sure. oh, you're ready to, to hit up. Like, what's the next one up? Green circle. Is I think that the green, next yeah. easiest green circle? Okay, yeah. so we go and to the first green that, circle. Yeah, then blue square. Yeah. And then there's a triangle in there too, right? Uh, I think, so. I think oh, it okay. goes black think diamond after blue. Blue square, it? black diamond. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we, simple, we go up to the first green. This is what kind of threw me. I couldn't believe it wasn't the chairlift or anything like that. It was just like you get to the top and then they're just like, okay, well, see you at the bottom. <laughs> and you're like... <laughs> What like there's other people ski like I'm petrified. I've gone down yeah. the bunny hill like twice, and now you like that's the thing you don't realize is you actually go much faster when you don't know what you're doing because you don't yeah. really know how to carve very yeah. well. So I'm like you just start going down the hill, and I'm like I'm gonna fucking kill someone. I'm gonna run into <laughs> yeah. someone, and I'm gonna kill them. Yeah. Uh, so that was more of the stress factor for me. I would say was was that element. It's actually of it. like really wild when as like someone who skied their whole lives or, you know, can ski anything pretty comfortably to see how gripped people are to the grading system. Like it becomes almost a biblical kind of grading system where they're like, this is a blue square. I'm completely out of my comfort zone. We were on a shoot for tourism cam loops a year or two ago. I'm just going to absolutely throw Tom Hill under the bus here. Um, <laughs> Please do pass guest Tom Hill. <laughs> But, another uh, great guest. Yeah, another great. <laughs> no, he is a great he was, guest. He was our. He was like playing my boyfriend in this tourism series, and the the premise of the tourism series is like you know how in like brochures, there's always like a smiling couple, and like sandals resort smiling couple. It's like what's the story behind the smiling couple on the brochure? And so we like did a bit with tourism cam loops where it was like this couple, and actually the relationship is disintegrating at all times and it's further exacerbated exacerbated by see there's one middle school exacerbated <laughs> and you say exacerbated and everyone loses their shit <laughs> <laughs> exacerbated by adventures because yeah it's just triggering as you have experienced yourself john yes with the, yes. With the in-laws um anyway tom was adamant that we do not take him down any black diamonds and my my team and i were like no worries. Like we're kind of like on the call with him. We're like, no worries, no worries. And we're kind of like, hang up the call. We're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like if we have to go down a black diamond, we're gonna have to go down a black diamond. And we're shooting at Harper mountain, which is like a family ski resort that everything is really plainer. Like we're yeah. not dealing with anything. That's really a real black diamond here. Um, and there was this section where we had kind of dropped down to shoot something to get the, the light. And then we looked at Tom. We're like, okay, like this is, he had seen, that this was a black diamond and he was like this is a black diamond and <laughs> we're we slid down it by you know a quarter so what's your guys strategy for getting me out of here <laughs> and we we're like tom just ski it like it's fine like we'll take it nice and slow we'll just zigzag across zigzag across the hill he's actually like a decent skier yeah but because in his head he had had like a bad experience on a black diamond in whistler like two weeks prior 
And in his head, this black diamond was going to be where he passed away. <laughs> and that's where you go to die in his mind as a skier, as like a novice skier. Um, and we were like, okay, well, you can like, you can boot pack up out of this run if you would like to. Like you can walk up the run, but he was not going to do that either. So we tried to like, we tried to like ski him down this black diamond. And then I tried to like crisscross him through some trees to get on the blue <laughs> That was, like, next to it. So I had him, like, bushwhack it. Anyway, the rage Tom had directed towards us. He was – it wasn't even, like, rage. It was just, like, betrayal. It was, like, we had be- we had betrayed him and and completely crossed a boundary in the fact that we had gotten him onto a black diamond that was arguably a blue square, like, on any other ski hill. Um, and it just kind of, it just like made, and then we had to talk about it later as we were like debriefing for the next day and da, da, da. it's like, we, he, he fucking meant it. He meant it. Like, we're not going on black diamond. He wasn't like, LOL, don't take me on black diamonds, guys. He was like, <laughs> don't fucking take me on a black diamond. And I, I just like always realized like how fucking scary it is for people that you, you're like, that sign says bad. No, I can't go here. Yeah. You know? And it's, Yeah. Skiing can be terrifying. You always forget. You always forget when oh, you do it all the time. You know? It was terrifying. I did do one black diamond at the end of the Castle Mountain, but it was like a, sh- but it was the shortest one. I was mm. just like, okay, I'm comfortable with like, it's, it, it, I think it was like black diamond halfway and then blue square halfway or something like that. But I just remember it being like, okay, this is short enough. I just want to try it. And, and it was fine. But I just think it's because you grow up thinking that like black diamond is synonymous with danger or like this totally because it's also just Metal. a cool sounding name. Like black well, diamond going from sounds blue cool square, and menacing. Blue square it's, to black diamond is such a so huge step yeah. up. Yeah. And then it's, double black diamond. Oh my God. Triple black diamond. Fuck. Off. Oh, is, there, is that shit, a thing? Dude. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. I, didn't know I mean, that. honestly, like I don't want you guys to sound like total squares here. Like, we're, but, we're both blue squares. Katie. Yeah. Don't worry. You. You're major blue squares. But the, when you get to a level and like your ex-girlfriend probably knows this, John, like you don't even talk about the level of the runs. Right. You're wow. just like, I just, you just talk about the name or you're like, yeah, I go you down double eat, shoot or whatever. You have, no, you have like your own names for it. Oh, wow. you, and, you and your, you and your buddies that you always ski with have names for the zones you ski in. Oh. And then people don't know, like you can, you can talk about your, like we have sketchy entrance, Bakersfield, J-Hole. Nothing's actually named that on the ski hill. Oh. But we just know where we're going. And then you I... ditch losers when they try to keep up with you. They're <laughs> like, what black diamond are we going to? And you're like, parachute. You're like, I don't know, whatever. I also, funny enough, yeah, have a J-hole. Up. So pretty good. There you go. In curling? No, no, just because my name is John. Yeah. Oh, you get depressed? Butt. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I thought you meant like a K-hole, but like oh. you have to <laughs> he gets oh. into a J-hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I do ketamine, but I call it a J-hole. Well, I thought <laughs> Me you and my saying, friends like, call a it a depressed. J-hole. <laughs> when you're having like a small depression and you're like, I'm in a J-hole. You can say to your wife, <laughs> that would be I'm good, in a J-hole, actually. babe. I think John John microdoses like kombucha <laughs> once yeah, in a I while. Yeah, micro- I don't microdose kombucha. Well, I, just, mac- just I macrodose kombucha. kombucha. I go yeah. full I go full bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a full bottle of kombucha at any moment. <laughs> I bought I bought one today. Actually, there's one sitting in my fridge right yeah, now. Yeah, I was gonna ask. What does it yeah. do for you? It's like sugar water, isn't it? It's, I don't what think, does kombucha like do? No, kombucha is fermented tea. It's not sugar water, Katie. Come there's on. There's so much sugar in that stuff. No, I there's don't not. In kombucha. There isn't fight? that much sugar. The bottle I have downstairs has like six grams of sugar in the in the whole bottle. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. That's some of them. Bad. Some of them have added sugar, but not very many. Right. So some of them have fruit juice, my, which has mind, sugar in it. In my mind, kombucha is one of those things. It's like a mismarketed health food. And they're, it's really just like a lemonade. And then everyone drinks it and it's like, oh, I'm being healthy. Why does this taste like Coke? And you're like, because it actually kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say for me, kombucha tastes good. I, I like the taste of it. So that right there. I'm I've grown to like it a little bit, too. Like I never liked it before uh, you started sort of bringing it around. Um, yeah. when, when we record in person and then the taste is good. I, like I, I just, good. I don't drink Katie as you maybe remember. So like kombucha is just, it's, I guess it's like my, my alcohol or gives whatever. You a little, gives you a little buzz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, I mean, it's titillating. Yeah. It's good though. It's like I would yeah. say, I wouldn't think of it as like on par with pop or something like that. Like, I don't think, I think some kombuchas do have 
a decent amount of sugar. I think the most com- sugar I've ever seen in a kombucha is 12 grams. And okay. most pops okay. are like 30 to 40. So nothing right. crazy. Yeah. So it's not that bad. Yeah. And I, and maybe it's good for my gut. They say it is. It's supposed to be. I mean, would you, is it though? Well, you? I mean, I, I would know. say I have IBS. Yeah. I take probiotics every day and I usually drink one kombucha every day and that, and my IBS is under control. There, okay. Wow. There you go. That's all the I evidence. Do you fuck with like kimchi and all that stuff? No, I don't like, I've, I don't, I've never really had kimchi, but no, kimchi I don't, I've good. never gotten, I've never gotten that far down the, down the rabbit hole. Fermented foods. Yeah. yeah, I just like uh, just like kombucha. I, I'm not like uh, I'm not a big explorer. I'm not right. like, oh, I like this fermented tea. I've Let's see the, what else we can ferment. The Icelandic, uh, it's called like Hakarl or like the Icelandic shark, where it's like what? the fermented shark that they like bury on the beach or whatever. What? Um, have you not heard of this? No. It's disgusting. It's awful. I had a friend from Iceland who brought some back and it is. Jonas? Yeah, it is yeah. the worst it's so it's so nasty because it's just it's literally just rotten shark and you you fuck? eat a piece of it and then you take a shot of like some sort of like liquor um and it's sounds terrible it's fucking awful and it's supposed to be like i don't think and it, it's not a thing and you what's like. the, is it supposed to have some benefit or something i don't even think it does it's just like a bunch of like there's like a bunch of ammonia eating away at this rotten <laughs> shark flesh and you eat it and it's so it smells so bad it tastes disgusting it's the worst thing I've ever eaten, like by a long shot. It's really, really nasty. Um, if we're cool. talking well, about thanks for letting food. us know, Stefan. Really, well, we're talking about it. fermented foods. So. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It's really like this is the really worst thing I've ever eaten. Speaking of the worst thing things, I've ever eaten is foie gras. I will say. I oh, really? I cannot. I don't I think can't I've ever had mentally, that. Mentally, I can't mentally or emotionally process foie gras. It's like bad um, too in terms of the way they make it right oh. that's what i mean like yeah. they're literally stuffing tubes down ducks necks yeah. and being like s- filling them with food so their livers get really fatty and then that's yeah. what you eat Ugh. is this stuffed fat like when when people order it trying to be bougie or like act like they're rich pretentious i'm like you're yeah awesome. it's like an objectively I really evil food. really oh it's asshole food yeah it's just terrible yeah anyway Speaking of asshole food, let's move on to our social media updates. What a fucking good segue. Now let's move on. It's time to discuss what popped up in your feed. Who are you following? What did you see? Sports or politics, tweets and skis, hot takes on the TL, a fast food freak. It's a social media update. Katie, we always like to start with the guest. What's going on on your social media? Well, the biggest thing that's going on on my social media lately is I've been promoting my movie, Like a Psychopath. Um, that's and fun. I was talking to my co-star about it, Evan Jonakite, who's been in the in just in Hollywood for like 20 years. And he like doesn't promote his stuff. He just is like, yeah, if it doesn't pop on its own, then it's just like trash or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do uh, the J hole. So, I do the blood triple black diamonds. It's like whatever. <laughs> so I was like, so my six grid posts in a row here is like not considered super cool in the industry. <laughs> nice, nice. Thanks for the heads up. But uh, yeah, I I'm feel enjoying. like when it's your first movie though, you're kind of allowed to, and yeah. also you're doing everything. You're not just like this guy acting in it. You know, you wrote it, you directed it, you're starring in it. Like, I feel like that's okay. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? If being earnest is the reason I'm not cool in Hollywood, then fuck Hollywood. I'm never going to not be earnest and uh, freak out about cool shit happening in my career. Sorry. I'm just not. Um, So that's been happening. And then, yeah, losing followers, though, interestingly enough, as as I've been promoting the film. Which is, yeah, I've been doing so much content and I feel like those, con- the, the reels go like kind of, every time we do like a reel that goes kind of viral or a TikTok that goes kind of viral, you get all these new followers. And then, and then you like settle back into your normal life of being like, here's my lunch. And people are like, <laughs> I don't care about this bitch's fucking lunch. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and they started like ditch. They're like, wait, I thought I had like stumbled across like a, a real like ball busting, like bike joke gal. And you're like. Yeah, you get that like once every three months. And then I just am like, His, my dog is cute. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then lately I've just been like going so ham on promoting the movie that uh, I feel like people are like, we're, we'll come back. We'll, we'll get it. We'll we get it. Yeah. Once we get it's it. over. Yeah, we'll right. be... we get it. Now, and I've done that too. I've, I've like, when people are having success, uh, sometimes I'm like, oh, okay. 
leave me alone. <laughs> I'll see well, where you're at in a year. <laughs> I'm curious about this because we go through this a little bit with blocked party is it, it, it's weird where people will listen to the show and they will like the show. But then if you reach some sort of like predetermined level of success that a person has in their mind that, that becomes like unacceptable to them where it's like, I want to like this thing and I want to support this thing. But then if it makes too much money, I resent that and I don't like it anymore. Have you gone through a little bit of that with the ski community where people kind of go, okay, I liked Katie when she had 20,000 followers and it kind of felt like it was for me. But now that she has 80,000 followers and she's making a movie, I don't like it anymore. Like, have you gone through that? Probably for sure. I mean, people don't like send you messages and be like, by the way, I used to like you and I don't anymore. So just like, <laughs> oh, people do send us messages like that. We do get. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, I, I haven't gotten much of those. However, I was memeified by an account a, a year or so ago. There's this thing called the icon pass, which is you can like buy a conglomerate pass and you can ski all this various resorts. And a lot of people at smaller ski hills are saying like the icon pass is like the reason why they're overcrowded and. Uh, the lines are huge and it's like bastardized the ski industry and all, and they have nothing good to say about the icon pass and the icon pass hired me to roast them because they are aware obviously that they're getting eaten alive out on social media. So they hired me to roast them. Um, I roasted them, sent back, send them the V1. They were like, eh, that was too much, too much roast, <laughs> a little hotter than we thought for the corporate line. So then we, we had to give them like a watered down just, yeah corporate version of that roast and then they posted it um in the spirit of like we know we we hear you like can we can we laugh about it yet and then I got I had this meme created that was like something along the lines of like I was I was supposed to be like fighting for them but then I like joined the bad guy it's probably like a comic book meme that I don't actually really get and I just like dm the meme page I was like fuck you guys. Like, why? Why? Like, do you get this at all? Like, do you get the bit? Like, they hired me to roast them. But I'm anyway. But then I was like, why am I even having this conversation? Like, why? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, tr- as soon as you start standing up for yourself in your DMs, that's when you know it's like, it's time to walk. You've away. already <laughs> you know lost I mean? at that point. You've already lost, unfortunately. <laughs> and I've had to, like, check myself a lot lately because I'm like, I, my go, like, my resting state on social media is I want to fight. Yeah. Like I genuinely, I want to fight. That's the right and, attitude to have. I think that's correct. And so when people like s- s- comment dumb ass shit, I just am, I want to go at them. I just want to go to their page for five minutes, look at their bullshit and come back and be like, you look like you did it, whatever. I, I will yeah. say I, I, I'm not on Twitter anymore, but one thing that was really funny was, and it was like dumb guys gaining enough self-awareness to do this. And I respected the move so much is you'd see a guy make a really stupid, annoying reply and then you'd go to his bio to find something to make fun of. And he'd be like, if you're looking at my bio right now, I must have pissed you off. And it's like, oh, my Ooh. God, you did. You motherfucker. You're so smart. <laughs> Fuck. Damn it. And so I'm like, I, ha- I have to respect that. You know, that's that's yeah. that's sometimes smart. I go to their page just to get their first name. Like, thanks, Eddie, for your opinion. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah. Just yeah. to make it a bit more personal. Yeah. So glad you weighed in, Jacob. Yeah. Like, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Like, yeah. it's just the Dave factor. Like, OK, Dave, like. We get yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, we, Stefan, we found that one guy and I think he's still doing this. We found this one guy on Twitter who was like, if you follow me, I will yeah. block you because I don't bad. believe in like follower culture or whatever. Yeah. And then a bunch of our listeners followed him and he blocked every single one of them. Yeah. He, st- he still has zero followers. Yeah. He sticks it's, to the bit. Brad, it's really good. if you're looking for an easy, uh, is it S C H E N K? No, it's just S H E N K. I think. Okay. If you're looking for an easy block, if you're looking for an easy block, just head on over to Brad Shank. Just follow him. He'll do it. It looks like his account might be gone. Oh, wow. It says no, this account doesn't. There. Oh, is He's, it? Yeah, it's at Shank Brad. Oh, Shank oh, Brad. There okay. we go. Yeah. And I'm blocked <laughs> because I, because uh, yeah, because I followed him. Because you followed him. Yeah. That's a great bit. I mean, that's a good, you know, don't even follow me or I'll block you. Love it. It's really yeah, good. It's Stefan, really good. what's going on in your social media? Um, well, this is a show I've been watching. I'm watching Reacher season two. I don't know. If yeah, I feel like any... people are into this thing. It's, mm-hmm. it's so much fun. It's so good. Um, it is like, it is just like a big, stupid action show, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, and this is season two. I love season one. Season two is on right now. I'm really enjoying it. The guy who plays Reacher is great. He's a really big guy, and I think they also use camera tricks to make him seem even bigger. Um, to make That's him seem sick. like I think he, so. I think he's like six four, but he looks like he is like six foot eight or six foot nine. 
uh, the way they film him. Um, and he's great. The villain this season is Robert Patrick. Are you taking notes, Stefan? Of, uh, okay. of the camera techniques. Too. Okay. All right. Uh, Robert Patrick is the villain. Uh, nice to see him. He's looking, he's looking a little puffier, but you know, he's, he's getting up there, but he's still, Whom's he's still a good us, villain. Stefan. Yeah. Um, anyway, this scene, this is the end of episode four and it's not that much of a spoiler to be honest, but this is maybe the single best ending to a TV show episode I have ever seen. It's so perfect. Um, and we can just watch, watch the whole thing here. Um, and it's, uh, the title does sort of spoil it a little bit, but it, it's still, the payoff is still really good. Right. So here we go, Dan. Yeah. Before you ask if it's done, it is. Just not in the way you hoped for. You're causing a very complex operation, a lot of problems. $65 million worth, Langston. Assume that's who I'm talking to. Head of security? Head of this whole thing? Maybe we've been approaching this the wrong way, Mr. Reacher. Just Reacher. Okay, Reacher. Why don't we make a deal? I have the means to give you anything you could ask for. What is it that you want? I want to throw you out of a helicopter. <laughs> it's so good. And it's incredible. And also, so it doesn't do it justice here because it cuts to like the the YouTube channel's uh, end credits. But it ends on uh, a needle drop of Psycho Killer by the Talking Heads. It starts playing immediately when it hits the credits. And it's just like, it's so on the nose. It's so stupid. And it's just like, I love when shows and movies just like lean into that sort of thing. Um, and it's great. I watched that ending like five times last night when I saw it. It's incredible. It's just like the zoom in on him, like the push in, the delivery is so like he, he's a, he's a good actor too, but he's just really good at like delivering these really cheesy and stupid lines in a way where Wait, I like, don't get it. So I don't get it. So yeah. you like it because it is cheesy or oh, yeah. is like being thrown out of a helicopter, like a thing that is a thing saying? that is a thing this season as well, because a bunch of his friends from his former like army unit have been getting thrown out of a helicopter by that guy. <laughs> so that, that helps for the context, I guess. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I didn't know if that was just like a burn in action stuff. Right no, now. Like, it, it, the, the context of it is oh. that a lot of his friends have been getting thrown out of a helicopter and killed um, throughout this. That's kind of the ongoing theme of the season actually. And it's pretty clear that's what's going to happen in the final episode, which hasn't come out yet. But it's so it's so nice to know that in advance that he's going to throw this guy out of a helicopter and it's going to be incredible. Um, mm. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but I, it's, I feel like that clip would be sick to start like a ski movie because, uh, you know, they do like the hella yeah. scheme. I could see like a Warren Miller like, here's what I want to do. I want to yeah. throw you out of a helicopter. Then it absolutely just cuts to guy falling out of helicopter yeah. scheme. It would be really sick if yeah. ski movies had any money and could afford to license <laughs> anything from Prime. <laughs> well, Netflix. what? Doesn't doesn't the big uh, the big dog uh Warren uh have the have the pockets for that? Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. I was in the Warren Miller I was in the Warren Miller movie last year. Yes, I know. 74th. Yeah. The and, yeah, not to brag. Uh but um oh fuck, I shouldn't say this. We had a <laughs> You don't have to if you don't want yeah. to. Anyway, whatever. We can edit it later if we feel like it's too naughty. But we had a crazy. We had a. De I shouldn't say a crazy budget. We had a decent budget. We had like an operable budget, and uh, we have a joke internally because um, there was like a bunch of shit that went wrong on my segment, like during our shoot in particular, and including I broke my ass, which was awful. <laughs> like broke my coccyx on a. Oh my god! Rail. Oh my god! I know, it was so bad. Anyway, I'm like a 35 year old woman. Like, what was I doing? Like hitting a rail because I'm in the Warren Miller movie. Like I got excited. Like I was like, watch me. I'm fucking succeed again. Um, anyways, rails not for me anymore. But um, we we have this like internal joke because the next year. Oh, sorry. So we had to like end up we ended up like having to get this hotel room and like, the only hotel that was available was like a suite. And then we had to go like heli skiing. It was like delayed by a day. So we had to do like three days in the helicopter. And then we. All this shit kept happening that we had to just like pay more money for. And then the following year, Warren Miller was like, we're not shooting segments this year except for a handful. And everything is going to be like this memorandum thing. And then this is the last Warren Miller movie. And oh. like, my little mini production team, we were like, bro, Warren Miller. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like we financially. Katie we Burrell broke her ass <laughs> and that we're done. <laughs> 
we sank them. Now, I know that's obviously not what happened. I, I think it has more to do with the, the overall financial model, I'm sure, of the business sure. itself. But internally, we have a joke where we're like, if we hadn't gotten that fucking penthouse, like, it <laughs> would still exist. Like, it would still exist. We broke it. Yeah. We you broke them. it. Anyway. That didn't yeah. feel too naughty. I think you're okay. No, I think that's okay. That I really did a good job in my telling of it. Yeah, you did. You did. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, pro- I protected everyone. I, uh, as I was going, I was working full time in my head while I was retelling that story. You know what I mean? Like I was crunching numbers. I was like, you like, did great. Things. Yeah. You did great. CIA shit in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, John, what's going on in your social well, media? Well, uh, Stefan, you may... Oh, you don't have Twitter anymore, so you probably didn't see this. But, um, you know, I think we can all agree Twitter has gotten so, so, so much worse over the last God knows how long. And uh, it was very cool that um, I saw... I had a moment on Twitter this week that just felt like an old school, kind of a beautiful Twitter moment. And I, I, I copy and I, I, I screen capped all the tweets and it got quite a lot of 1400 likes. So obviously people agree with me, but it just really felt like one of those, uh, a great old moment. So here's what happened. Uh, this is on December 30th, uh, Philip Matarese or Matarese, uh, Phil or Philip just tweeted Janelle Monet flashing her 10 out of tens was the highlight of 2023, okay. uh, which is, you know, sure. Okay. No problem. Whatever. And then a guy replied, uh, this is uh, media literacy chud at sure, sure replied, Googling this now, and then replied to his own tweet, noise. <laughs> that, that is a bit of a throwback, I think. <laughs> so I just thought I was like, that is extremely sort of what Twitter funny. used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Just a beautiful like, oh, I didn't realize Janelle Monet flashed uh, her breasts. I'm going to go check it out. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It was a pretty cool. good moment. Nice. Yep. Wait, so do you guys still call it Twitter? Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you think anyone will ever really adapt? I'm sure there's like a hardcore Elon oh. Musk crew that calls it X, but like all of I've, those psychos have for sure. It's also but, yeah. the the one place I have noticed where they will do it. And I think it's just like a corporate thing is sports media all calls it X. But do they say X formerly Twitter? Cause a lot they of were articles for a while say, and now it seems like they're just saying X. That's so funny. Man. So they'll, so they'll just say like, Oh, look at, you know, like I watch UFC quite a bit and they actually put like tweets on the bottom of the screen, like as fight they were, they started doing that in COVID because obviously there was no one, they were doing the shows in empty arenas. So they were putting tweets at the bottom of the screen. So it sort of felt like, Oh, I'm watching this with a crowd or whatever. And then they've right. just kept doing it, even though the pandemic is over and they're I should be clear. They're only showing tweets from like famous people or like right. other fighters or whatever. But they will say like, oh, look at these, uh, you know, oh, so-and-so just posted on X that this fight is really amazing or whatever. And you'll see like on TSN hockey coverage or whatever, it'll be like, oh, on X, uh, so-and-so said this. So that to me is the only place I've noticed where they're like consistently saying X instead of Twitter. That makes sense. I feel like uh, with like what, you know, what we know about like sports media people a lot of the time and like UFC especially. So yeah, they're just very serious and and they're also probably like being bought to a certain degree. For For sure. sure. A hundred percent. I have financial exchange happening there with like a press machine where it's like trying to rebrand to X. Yeah. And they go to UFC to make that happen. Yeah. That's actually, yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, I will always call it Twitter and uh, much respect to media literacy chud for giving me a, a beautiful moment. And speaking of beautiful moments, let's move on to our block tale. What did you tweet? You brought receipts. Block tale. Woo. No longer can see the post. It's a block tail. Woo! You probably deserved it. It's a block tail. All right, Katie, you told us before the show that this is a good story. So, and you've already told multiple good stories on the show. So, I'm excited for this one. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Set me up, much Jesus. Okay, so <laughs> oh, I, I can do it. This is gonna. This is gonna <laughs> suck. Go yeah, ahead. that's better. Yeah. That's better. I much prefer being an underdog when it comes to a story. <laughs> Um, God, I hope guest 269 doesn't have to deal with that. So <laughs> this is not necessarily a blocked tale, but this is a bit of a goat. This is a ghosted tale yep. and it's a ghosted tale in a really weird way in that it's a corporate ghosting, which doesn't really happen. But 
basically, and this is kind of on me and my team to a degree, but there were there were two relatively large, I'm going to leave them unnamed, companies that we used to do content for. Um, if you spend like five minutes on my channel, you can figure it out, I'm sure. But they were not necessarily working together. And, well, they were not working together, but they had hired us to create content for them. And because we were on a super tight schedule last year, we decided to shoot everything over the course of a week in Alta. So we got sent all of these ski suits and we got sent these skis and we were supposed to go create content in Alta for various different things. We had had a call with the ski company um, and wherein they were basically like, we'd really like it if you could uh, tone down this like bit you're doing um, with this like leisure athlete or like, I don't know, whatever my counterculture bit is in their mind um, and lean more into like you just skiing and having fun and da-da-da. And I was like, look, I'm never going to give you like cute girl go skiing bits. Like it's just not going to happen. It's not who I am. It's not ever who I've been. And my, the audience I've built over time would be like, the fuck is going on here? If I started just behaving like every other ski athlete or influencer that we've already seen, like I, I just can't do it. Um, and that coincided with these ski suits being sent to us. And we, and we used, a ski suit for this content that hadn't been approved correctly up the chain of command. So simultaneously up the chain of command on two, in two different companies, the way I was approaching content was being criticized at a higher level. What I feel like is happening is there's like women at this marketing manager level who love my content, think it's fun, get it, get the relatability factor and want to work with me. They bring me into the fold. They get a budget approved. Then I go create the content before the content actually goes live. It's run up the chain of the command, run up the chain of the command. Who's ever up top. And I don't want to make it a gender wars thing, but I know for a fact that in both of these cases, it's middle-aged white guys. Yeah. And, um, one of them both on both sides, they were like, this content is regressive for women because they wanted, they want women to show up the way that they think, uh, has been successful in the, way that men have showed up in sports marketing, which is like super sick, send it, you know, be the coolest, be the most badass, wear your goggles and nobody sees your face guy. Um, and, and I was like creating like anti-hero content to that or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, we got ourselves into this situation where basically one of the pieces had been approved by the other company but the ski suit that we were wearing in that piece was not approved. And it's our fault because we tried to double down on the content, blah, 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 blah. So we went through this whole back and forth with this one company. They told us they couldn't, we couldn't put out this one thing, but we could put out this other thing, but we couldn't put out this other thing. Then we went to the other company and we showed them the thing and they just didn't respond. And this is a long-term working relationship we'd had with this company. Yeah, They just didn't respond hmm. and so my team and I were like well, what do we do like we're on the hook here and for this company but this like company had you been paid yet it. sorry to interrupt had you been paid yet okay so that, we, at least that's we happened been, we had been paid by the company who wasn't getting back okay okay so we launched the content we just went live with it and to this day I have never heard back from <laughs> the ski company <laughs> When we went live with this content, the other company, the ski suit company, reached out and said, do not release any further content and we will not be working with you anymore. Oh, my God. And like unfollowed, unfollowed me, um, ended up like we, we went to we went back and forth with them. We, they ended up like paying me out to never post about them again. And. <laughs> We're over here going like, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> like, what? Wait, 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 what? Like, we went from being like, we're creating fun content for people to have a good time, LOL, have a little giggle, you know, whatever it is, to like these two massive companies being like, one ghosted me, and the other was like, literally don't contact us, contact us ever again. Like, we're paying you out to not post your content that you we hired you to create. 
It was like very disorienting and wild. And then also further, it just like furthered for, for me, like I can't do this anymore. Like I can't create content for brands anymore in the way that I had been doing previously, which was like, I was operating, like you could purchase content from me. That was like my way of having some sort of ownership or agency over the content I was creating versus like becoming sponsored by a company. And then you're always having to like post just various shit. Um, so it was like this purchasable scenario. So I could tell them exactly what the creative was going to be ahead of us going to shoot it and then launch it. And in this like, sort of like perfect storm, massive, like sort of, they just kind of like clashed combined double down situation. We like lost two of our biggest clients. One of them never contacted us. Like one of them we still haven't heard back from. And that's so um, crazy. And, and we, we still don't really know why. And then we were in a conversation the other day with a new company that was like, so we would really love to work with you, but we're like really curious what happened here. Like the industry is small enough. That yeah, it's like, sure. If you do any digging, you know what I mean? And, and we're just like the men at the top thought we were being we don't actually know this is our theory right, this is our right. theory you know that has come to us like via trickle down like all like very and then the women that were in that marketing position like end up quitting and then like mess sending me a text and like hey can we talk offline and i'm like yeah what happened and they're like we got bought by this company who was like comedy no longer fits in our thing and so you get these like you get like a window into what happened but in in your it was just like the wildest situation where you're like think you're just doing your job running your content agency like and then just be like ghosted by like that level of a company was so wild that's so weird pay- yeah especially because yeah. like you know what you're doing is so distinctive in the industry and like you said it's a small industry it just i'm always so confused when stuff like that happens where it seems like they're confused by the content you made and you're like, totally, this totally. is, and, and like, I get it to an extent where it's like, well, the CEO or whoever isn't overseeing every decision that's being made, but it's also just like, you know, how do you get to a point where again? Yeah. Like I said, you're pretty distinctive. You should, they should know like what they're paying you for. It seems weird to pay someone who's good at something and has made uh, you know, has carved out a niche doing this thing and being like, oh, we don't want you to do the thing that people like. We want you to just do exactly. this other thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. This keeps happening where companies like come to us and they're like, we want to work with you. Like we, the roasting sna- sna- example is a perfect example. And we've worked with Icon Pass since and we've had a great experience working with them again. But in the first, in this case of this roasting scenario, they're like, roast us. We roast them. They're like, whoa, don't roast us. <laughs> like you literally asked us to roast you, you know? Yeah. Or they're like, make something comedy and so we go make comedy which can be like fucking aggravating or cause conversations or cause conflict and then they're like wait no comedy is when you're like tee hee hee diddly do and you're like that's not what I'm here to do <laughs> you know like we the this piece of content that, I, that they paid us not to post was a um like I was wearing this ski suit which was the incorrect ski suit for this piece of content apparently but I was I did a what's better ski touring or skiing at the resort and I'm like and the bit was that I was saying that skiing at the resort is better than ski touring and I do all these jokes as to why now all this piece of content would have done is started a fucking fight which would have been the best thing that could have happened in terms of getting this ski that's what you want exposure you know it would have started a massive argument and when they saw the piece and realized it was going to start a massive argument, they were, like, scared that people would say that their company was associated with slagging um, ski touring and that people wouldn't ever buy their ski suits again to go ski touring in. And I'm like, more people would have seen your ski suits. Nobody cares what the ski suit is yeah, for. I can't buy, buy this fits. ski suit that represents skiing at the resort only. <laughs> like, what? Like, what? And and it anyway, it was just the level of the level of fear in so many brands approaches and strategies is so boring to me. And I have just gotten like increasingly ruthless with it, I get I guess, like up front with clients when they yeah. or partners when they want to work together. I'm like, look, I'm gonna fucking from the get go tell you how I'm gonna operate. And if it's not a fit, it's not a fit, and that's so fine. Like yeah. we don't we don't need to bother, yeah. you know? 
We've well, had that happen on on great. a smaller scale on my on my Twitch stream where we'll deal with potential sponsors and they'll be like, "Okay, well, what we want you to do is basically rebrand your entire stream so it's about us and like change your background, change all of your subscriber alerts, change all your follower alerts, change everything to be about us uh, and like talk about us constantly and it's like like our followers aren't going to like this." You know, no. this, will like just, this will make them will make them actively not yes. use your brand. And we've told them that and they're like, oh, OK, well, we, we won't do it. But it's just like, what what do you think is like, I, I don't know. I mean, I think we have a very distinct style, maybe is, is part sure. of it. And you get a lot of streamers who don't have any sort of style. and They're just like a generic streamer. But, you know, we worked with a sponsor a couple weeks ago where we got to choose which prizes we were going to give away to our our followers. And the prize we chose to give away was a really high end Toto toilet. Um, and which is like, it's like a gaming company. Like, why are they giving away a toilet? But they're like, yeah, sure. Hell yeah. If that's what your viewers want, then we'll do it. So it's just like, they should just be listening to the people who know what their content is. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's like, you know your audience the best. So if you're hiring me and I already have a big audience, maybe just trust that I know what my audience would want. Exactly. Nobody in my audience would ever, would ever watch me doing a bit on ski touring versus the resort and go, Katie actually really believes yeah. this. Yeah. Of like course. they know it's a bit. They always know it's a bit. Yeah. You know? It, it's funny to me when certain posts go, they like, there's like a certain point where it hits, like where you're like, oh, the like recesses of hell have joined us in the comment section. And it's like, then they're just like, I don't get this. Is she actually hiking? And you're like, oh my God. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> pray, I'm, pray, I'm praying for you, sir. Like, that's the least I can, that's all I can do. But it's there's there's no scenario wherein anyone doesn't the majority of people don't get that it's a bit. But brands, I think they're literally they're they're terrified from the cancel culture that happened a few years ago, um, and and rightfully so in some instances that these brands needed to, needed to be checked, you know. But now they're the the way that they have just it's just made them afraid to do anything even slightly con- contradictory like a ski touring versus a resort, the most, the most like least loaded conversation you could possibly have, you know, like let's anyway. Crazy. Yeah. I want to recreate that piece for another brand. Cause it was actually really funny. Yeah. Do you, it sounds like you absolutely should. Um, okay. We have a great listener, uh, block as well. And this one, uh, you know what, uh, Stefan does kind of also dovetail with my social media update does feel like a bit of an old Twitter, Okay. Type of block. This one is from Sam. Did you say dovetail because of peep this out, by the way? Or no, I'm just don't. saying that. Okay. No, I just he say does. Dovetail. He famously said he'll say this flavor dovetails nicely. Oh, into- yeah, that's terrible. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. Okay. Uh, so Sam sends in uh, this quick background. Last week, Oklahoma City voted on whether or not to fund 95% of a new billion dollar basketball arena with 5% coming from Thunder ownership. I was actually conflicted because even though it's a god awful stadium deal, the message being pushed was that the Thunder would leave OKC if it failed. I voted no anyway and posted a tweet about my choice to vote no and my general relief that at least my favorite basketball team wouldn't be leaving. Some guy with his full name and year of birth in his handle replied (laughs) to that tweet, calling me an idiot. I didn't appreciate that response to what I thought was a very reasonable take. So naturally, I used Oklahoma's open court network to look the guy up and found (laughs) out that he has a pending DUI. (laughs) I simply replied to him with the county and case number for his DUI and he blocked me and then eight days later has not tweeted or interacted with a single post on Twitter. I I can only hope that my post was enough to keep him logged off forever. Love you boys and best wishes going into the new year. Happy new year. Nicely done. (laughs) God. Incredibly good. I just (laughs) there's something about that sentence. Uh, (laughs) His full name and year of birth in his Twitter (laughs) handle. Uh, Really good stuff. Uh, Thank you so much, Sam, for sending that in. If you want to send in a listener block, you can do so by sending us an email at blocked at blockparty.com. You can also donate to the show. Patreon.com slash blockparty. $5 $5 a month gets you access to three bonus episodes every single month. And also we have the $100 Club, which is a year-long subscription. And uh, Stefan and I are going to be announcing uh, what the $100 Club perks are for this year. We reset those every January, so pay attention for that. Coming up soon, we've got the Block Party D&D series with Jesse and DB from your Kickstarter Sucks continuing on over there. We also have a Discord. We've got ad-free episodes, merch discounts, all that good stuff. So head on over to patreon.com slash block party. Check it out. You can also follow us on Twitter 
and Instagram and TikTok at Blocked Party Pod. You can follow us on Blue Sky at Block Party. And if you want to see the video of this episode and see our shining faces as we discuss all of these things with you, you can head on over to our YouTube, youtube.com slash at Blocked Party. And of course, if you like the show, please tell a friend. Okay, Katie, we are here at the end of the show. That means it's time for the top three. Three, two, one. Trois, deux, un. Uno, 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 uno. Mustard. Three. Socks. Deux. Girlfriends. Uno, 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 uno. All right, Katie, what, what topic do you have for us for our top three? I want to do top three debilitating TV or film crushes. Oh, debilitating. Okay. That's good. I know my number one immediately. <laughs> <laughs> like, like saw them in a show. And it's, this is a crush on a character. Okay. Oh, right. right. Not the person, the character. This is a crush on a character. Okay. The the person themselves could help. Sure. But this is a crush on a character. And you see them in this show, TV, movie. Yes. And you you can't stop thinking about them. Love it. Okay. Okay. What's your number three, Katie? My number three <laughs> is Bobby Axelrod in Billions. Okay. Nice. Who's the, that? Who plays Bobby? It's Damien Lewis. Okay, yes. Hot guy. He's a British yeah. British actor, yeah. Ginger. Yeah. And he's like a hedge fund, like he's the definition of a hedge fund daddy, but he's a criminal about it and is an absolute psychopathic billionaire. And it was the hottest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> and as someone who is not ever exposed to like New York finance guys, I was just like, I couldn't believe that there were really kind of like men like this out there who would just like get in a jet. If you need to get in a jet, we'll get in the jet. Like we got to go somewhere. We'll get in the jet. And the way he drove his car, that was like $350,000 and the way that he like would fire people. But then the way he actually like cared about like the core people who had always been with him throughout the whole way, like he was an absolute mastermind and he functioned in a totally illegal way and he was fit <laughs> while, he, while he did it. Shout out to Bobby, uh, rich, the so, rich yeah. guy of Katie's dreams. Uh, Stefan, what's your number three? Uh, I watched this, I watched this recently. It's uh, a favorite movie of mine, but uh, edge of tomorrow, the, the Tom Cruise film, Emily Blunt in that uh, is like so good looking. It's crazy. And there's like, she does, there's like a yoga scene where she's like, like doing like, she's like up on like just her hands basically. And then does like, it's yeah. Her character's name is Rita Vertasky. It's a really good movie and she's great <laughs> in it, but I'm going to go with Emily Blunt's character in edge of tomorrow. So, so Rita, Rita, Rita. Vertasky. Yeah. <sighs> Love that. Say her name. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am, you know what? Like this is my whole list is going to be very nineties pilled. Uh, but, uh, my number three and look, I think we, we all got conned by this. Although I will say I still, I did think she was already hot in the glasses, but the, she's all that moment with Rachel Lee cook where she's like, gets the makeover, you know, whatever. I mean, she is so hot. Uh, and it just, yeah, there was just something about that moment in the movie where you're, yeah, it's, it's for the male gaze, but you're just like, yeah, I, I agree. She is very hot now. <laughs> I'm way into it. So yeah, I can't remember her character. Her character's Lainey, right? Lainey Boggs maybe is her name in that movie. Uh, wow, wow. That's a good recall. Okay. Uh, is, I don't know if that's right or not. I'm looking it up right now, but uh, that's a really good recall. If I'm right, I could be very wrong. Uh, you found it attractive because she was confident for the first time. Yes. That's what happened. Her name is yeah, Lainey. It, I'm just trying to figure it. Yeah, it is Lainey Boggs. Uh, that's sad. <laughs> so impressed that you remember. Sad it. that I know that. <laughs> Uh, Katie, your number two, please. My number two is Legolas. Oh, great <laughs> choice. Great <laughs> fucking <Lord> choice. <laughs> to the point that as a teenage girl, I would go see the Lord of the Rings movies like multiple times in theater. And then I found this website where you could look up what your elf name would be <laughs> and like what your elf life would be if you were to become an elf. And I was like straight up like so in love with Legolas that I was like, how do I become an elf in Middle Earth? so I can marry this guy. Like that's how intense yeah, my imagination That's a great like. choice. We did our annual, we watch it every year. We did our annual rewatch of Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's so, it's so fucking good, but I mean, it's just like, it's, it, he looks so good. It's insane. It's unbelievable. And then, I mean, so, so is Aragorn. Obviously. Like, there's a lot of good looking people in that movie. It's kind of crazy arrow. how these like hot guys sort of like ascend, uh, these blonde wigs. 
like Orlando like Bloom looks so it. good, and then like Henry Cavill looks really good as the guy in The <sighs> yeah. Witcher. But you're, but yeah. it's like a foolish blonde wig, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> God, these guys and are just ears. so hot. The ears elf too. Ears. Yeah. Yes, and ears. But the yeah. way he could operate oh. his bone arrow and just like the clutch things he did to just like save people yeah. at all times. I'm like, this man is it. This elf, sorry, this elf is a hero. And the relationship, like him and Gimli, obviously incredible relationship. They're so funny. It's so heartwarming. So, we were oh we God. were we were tearing up watching Return of the King. How can you not? No, Legolas has a it's, sense of humor. Oh, he's, he's like he's great. He'd be a good first date. Yeah, like, good banter. I feel. Oh, anyway. absolutely. That's a great choice. That's a really good choice. <laughs> great choice. Uh, my number two. I had to look up her name in the movie, but uh, Tina Carlisle from The Mask. That's Cameron Diaz. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean there's a reason the eyes too. pop out of the head. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't think I need to say much more it, than Cameron the Diaz's Red character moment. in The Mask. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. The cool part about Cameron Diaz, too, is like she has roles where she's playing different. Like you could have different versions of like what you think the hottest Cameron Diaz is. For like sure. She's sort of like Charlie's Angels. S- she's sultry in The Mask. Yeah. She's like a funny girl next door. And there's something about Mary. If you like that better, she's like a professional nice lady in the holiday she's in the holiday right yeah uh, yeah she's like, so, so very much in the holiday she is yeah. yes in the holiday. yes okay so that's yeah so there's like it's so that's the thing is it's like depending on what you like about women you could have a different version of cameron diaz that like really gets you going good for you good choice i don't yeah. she's not on my list but definitely had a good a good run cameron diaz um <laughs> okay my number two is uh, Lindsay Weir from Freaks and Geeks, uh, played by Linda Cardellini. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is about her in that show, but she, I mean, she's obviously a very she's attractive. Great. She's a very attractive woman, but there is something about her in that show. Just the outfits they had her in. Like, Wasn't very, she Vel- was she Velma and Scooby Doo as well? She was. I mean, Velma oh. and Scooby Doo is. I mean, she does look really good in that red dress. Yeah. But Lindsay Weir just wearing her dad's army jacket, kind of dressed down a little bit, and. Uh, Katie, you're number one. Uh, My number one is Peter Quinn in Homeland, played by Rupert Friend. I thought you were going to say played by Damian Lewis because I also haven't seen Homeland. No, sorry. Damian Lewis is also in Homeland. But Peter Quinn, I was so in love with Peter Quinn um, that when, so spoiler alert, but when he died, I had to go and watch every single interview with Rupert Friend that I could find <laughs> to differentiate in my brain the fact that Peter Quinn was not a real person and had not passed away because I was <laughs> crying so hard that this man I was I loved Peter Quinn was had died and the way he died was so noble and valiant and the way he operated in his career was always so like he was just held in to the highest regard and he was such an operator and just so skilled and I had to go like fall out of love with Peter Quinn by watching Rupert Friend interview like and Peter Quinn's an American Rupert Friend is a British man yeah and so like trying to trick my brain into knowing that he was no longer real was really um it was like crucial in my grieving process and also like understanding that this was not a person that I needed to be this in love with but my dream is to get a cat and name him Peter Quinn. And then hopefully he's like a really climby cat. And he's always like getting into trouble. And I'm like, Peter Quinn, get out of there. Like you're in a situation you shouldn't be in again. <laughs> yeah. Peter Quinn, may he rest in peace. Love that. Stefan. Yeah. Uh, I think this is an easy one for me. Vesper Lind from Casino Royale mm. played by Eva Green. Yes. Mm. I mean, well, especially because <laughs> I, I think like everyone was so excited for that James Bond. Cause it was like the big reboot where they were like, James Bond is going to be like, uh, he's like a badass now. He's not like, he's not like this kind of smarmy, you know? And, and so like, that was part of it is everyone was like so excited for the movie, but then like, Oh my God. I mean, and then she also dies at the end in very tragic fashion too. So that sort of sticks with you. Yeah. Um, But what I, what I, I mean, it helps that it's, I think it helps that like, she's in a very good James Bond movie. Right. Yeah. Cause like Halle Berry was in uh, like die another day and she, she looks great obviously, but that movie sucks shit. It's awful. Mm. Yeah. Right. I also think one thing that the newer James Bond figured out is that like Vesper Lind is also a super hot name. It is. It is. And they it really figured is. out like, oh, it's you can actually it's actually hotter when they have sort of a hot name and not their name isn't just like Booby Pussy the Third or whatever. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it's like, oh, <laughs> Vesper right. Lind actually is like, whoa, I'm yeah. so excited, you know? There was like a major androgynous name era, I feel. Yeah. Where it was like having girls named boy names was like really hot or like androgynous names are hot yes. for women. Yeah. Maybe we're still in it. I don't know. <laughs> I agree. I think we are. I've not lived, have not lived that reality with my name. Whatsoever. <laughs> Me neither. I have uh, like the my name is like the Mike of girl names. Do you know what I mean? Like Katie. I'm John. I mean, it's not You're it's John. not any better yeah. over here. And my sister's name is Katie. So it's just like, <laughs> your parents really went nuts. They went. They, they went you wild. Yeah, they they popped. Uh, my <laughs> number know? one also very '90s pilled, and I've talked about my love for her on the show before. Uh, but it is Amanda Beckett in Can't Hardly Wait, played by Jennifer Love Hewitt. Uh, the scene where Ethan Embry's character comes into the party and then like the, the characters kind of part and she's sitting on the couch in that blue top. Oh my God. That's, uh, that was, I think I pretty much, you know, figured out what was going on in that moment. It was like that movie came out in 97. That was like, I was a bit of a late bloomer. It's like, I saw that and I was like, yeah, this is, um, it's pretty good. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah just, I am, again in fact just a scene again yeah. totally like meant yeah. for the male gaze like they they got me they tricked yeah. me right in there uh yeah. hey you know what good for you honestly like as long as you're aware of it now yeah. later in life of course you know? yeah absolutely trying to be you know a good guy do you think legolas was for the female gaze like did they know how hot he was oh yeah when they were making they I, th- I think so and it's i mean i feel like orlando bloom's just one of those guys right that's just like he's so he's hot that just no matter what like again, i think I said, all like he's, i think all the elves were like that too because i mean it's part of them being an elf i think but you, they, you see them and it's like soft focus they're like glowing there's like lights behind them and like because yeah. what's his name from flight of the concords was one of the elves as well and people were like obsessed with him and this was mm. before flight of the concords obviously um, as like the hot elf and you see him like for like a minute, maybe tops. So I think all the elves look very good. I, I think, yeah, I mean, but even Liv Tyler was an elf too. Ex- yeah. So yeah, I think the elves are just point. for everyone's gaze, basically. Liv Tyler a lot of, a lot of the movie is like, would be also like, near the oh, top of my list. Anyway, yeah. a, right. a lot of so the movies elves like orcs are just, and stuff. And I think the elves are there true, just to sort true. of break it up a little bit, you know? Sure. Sure. You're like, Elf versus Hobbit, like you're gonna go elf every time for sure. Oh, yeah. unless you have like a really good chat with the Hobbit late late night at the bar. You're just <laughs> Which like, you wait, could. I, like, they're all they're all love your nice. personality. Like yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah, you I fucked was... Frodo? I thought you yeah. really liked Legolas. <laughs> oh well, we no, just I we had been such a, a good girl. talk. Oh, Sam for sure. Frodo doesn't have a very good personality. Sam for sure. I think. Sam Frodo spent Frodo me. spends the entire trilogy uh, getting stabbed and like passing out. Yeah, I've never seen Frodo's it. Just I just was guessing. You should watch Frodo's it. It's Sam, Sam is Sean Astin, right? Yes. Yeah. And he's great. Mm-hmm. He's wonderful. Yeah. John, you honestly should watch it. It is. It's so good. Yeah, maybe. Maybe one I, day. I think you should watch it. Uh, Katie, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, pleasure to have you. Uh, absolutely fantastic episode. Before we go, please, uh, what would you like to plug? I know it's your movie. Tell people where they can see it and all that. The floor is yours. <clears throat> 100% want to plug my movie. Um, going ballistic, plugging my movie. Um we Claire is, is in theaters across the U.S. and Canada on January 5th. Um, the U.S. Open is first, so the first week is in the U.S., except for Aspen. Uh, it opens on the 12th in Aspen, and in New York it opens on the 12th as well. And then – or sorry, no, it opens on the 7th in New York. And then uh, across Canada, we open on the 12th in Canada, so Calgary, Vancouver, Toronto – um, as well as a bunch of little small towns as well. But you can find all of the uh, theaters that you can see Weeklayers in at weeklayers.com slash watch. Just go to the site and click the list of theaters. Uh, I'm posting a ton about it at Katie Burrell TV on my social media. And um, yeah, I'm not going to shut up about it probably until February 4th to 6th, which is when we go to streaming. And then I might, I might be a little quieter about it for like a moment. <laughs> Ah, I say be I'm loud. I yeah, say be, get it be out loud there. as fuck. Yeah, it's a dream. It's a dream come true. So I don't know. I'm just like I don't give a shit. Like you can. Uh, this is the most exciting things ever happened to me. So here we go. There you go. Yeah. yeah so it, it was like it's like a miracle that it's in theaters and so this is happening. Like it's a miracle that it exists in the first place. It's like a sub million indie. You know that we like pulled off on a hope and a prayer and beg, borrowed, and sealed friggin' everything we could. And the fact that it's now gone this distribution deal with Greenwich Entertainment and it's in theaters. Like it's just the whole thing is crazy. So. Uh, it's a real underdog story, movie-wise. 
Love it. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, I'm excited to see it. So yeah, this episode comes out on January 8th. So if you're in the States, you can go see weak layers right now. If you're in Canada, wait a couple days, it will be coming out. Go see it. <clears throat> Follow Katie, Katie Burrell TV. Uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be great. I'm excited for you. Can't wait to see all of your future successes. And uh, if you want to see some of our moderate success, you can follow us again at Block Party Pod on a bunch of stuff. This episode is on YouTube at Block Party. You can donate to the show at patreon.com slash block party. And we'll see you back here next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.